and welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to talk about purchasing an ELT for your aircraft. That's the device that automatically sends a distress signal should your aircraft unfortunately crash. The idea is that search and rescue can pick up that signal and bring aid to you as quickly as possible. Maybe not the most exciting device to talk about, but in today's changing market, it's important to choose the right ELT for your needs. In fact, do you even have to have an ELT for your home built in the first place? The rule is that any home built aircraft that is equipped to carry more than one person must have an ELT installed and operating properly. The only exemptions are if you travel less than 50 miles from an originating airport or if you have a single place aircraft. So that leaves the majority of us needing to install one permanently in our aircraft. What is the function of an ELT? It is a self-contained radio transmitter that can send a distress signal in case we crash our aircraft. The ELT automatically turns itself on in a crash when an internal switch is triggered by excessive g-forces during rapid deceleration. This radio signal is ultimately relayed to search and rescue personnel that can hopefully locate our aircraft and render help. It would be nice if things were simple and there was only one type of ELT that you needed to worry about for your aircraft. Technology marches on and I'm going to present my three broad categories of ELTs and discuss the differences between those categories so that you can choose the best one for your needs. In our first category is what I call the legacy ELT model which you can find for a great price on eBay or maybe from a friend who wants to upgrade to a newer model. It is defined by its frequency beacon of 121.5. The problem with using 121.5 ELTs is that they are not monitored by the sophisticated satellite system intended to notify search and rescue of your crash. Instead, they rely on individual radio listeners that might pick up the signal, and then it's a challenge to figure your exact location. Search and Rescue does not know who you are from that signal. You might say these units are perfectly suited for pilots that merely want to satisfy the legal requirements of having an ELT installed and seldom venture far from home. Seriously, many of us do just fly around the immediate neighborhood. Nothing wrong with that. Generally, these models are now inexpensive as existing owners may want to upgrade these. Our second category involves the newer generation of ELTs that use a frequency of 406. The greatest benefit of these units is that they are heard by a series of satellites dedicated to search and rescue around the planet. The 406 ELTs transmit a distress signal that includes a unique identifier so the satellite recognizes your individual aircraft. You register this identifier with an online database so that your name and phone number is available to search and rescue. Yes, they know whose aircraft went down. Within minutes, the satellites using Doppler technology can pinpoint your location within just a couple miles of accuracy. As the satellites make additional passes over your downed aircraft, they can further pinpoint a more accurate location. In addition, this category of ELT has a GPS interface, which optionally allows your onboard navigation avionics system to supply GPS coordinates through a cable to the ELT and then onto the satellite. In this case, Search and Rescue knows exactly where your aircraft went down 
as soon as the ELT sends the very first signal. You need to check with the manufacturer to see if your navigation avionics is able to supply this GPS signal to the ELT. The third category of ELT is also a 406 model like the previous category but with the addition of a GPS receiver built in. This is the ideal setup as there is no need for interfacing the ELT to your onboard avionics to get that GPS signal. This ELT has its own GPS antenna so that your present location is always available to the ELT for transmission to the satellite. This is the most expensive model but clearly has the best features all in one standalone unit. Here are some words of advice for you. You may find the product descriptions of some of these ELTs to be a little misleading if you are not careful when it comes to identifying the models that have GPS capabilities built in compared to those that only have a connection for an external GPS signal. As an example, this popular unit has a description that reads enhanced position accuracy within 100 meters through built-in GPS interface. The devil is in the details. This ELT has no GPS capability on its own. It simply means it has an interface that allows it to use a GPS signal that must come from some other device in your aircraft. You should install the ELT and its antenna following the manufacturer's directions. One common point of failure with an ELT besides having old batteries is if the cable between the ELT and its antenna gets broken during a crash. Without an antenna properly connected the satellite cannot hear you. So keep in mind that the antenna cable should be routed in a way that an airframe failure cannot break it. A remote switch allows the ELT to be monitored and controlled from a convenient panel location. One of the first things to do after installing and testing your 406 ELT is to register its unique ID at the website beaconregistration.noaa.gov or 406registration Dot com. This registration allows search and rescue to contact you by phone if they hear your ELT distress call. This helps eliminate searches based on accidental activation or false alarms. Choosing an ELT for your home built from an avionics supplier or from eBay should be a little bit easier now that we appreciate the differences in some of these models. It also helps to explain why there's a variation in prices between them also. So pick one out and then get back to building. And by the way, for a fascinating look at how the search and rescue satellite network operates, take a look at this website. Lots of neat information there. It is common for 406 ELTs to also simultaneously transmit on the old 121.5 frequency for backward compatibility with search and rescue listeners. And also be sure to record your battery expiration date in your maintenance log and on the ELT.